joining us tonight. We do apologize for the short, the shortness of you know uh, getting the awareness out due to the fact that usually it's supposed to be two days ago Wednesday, but well, because due to logistics and also some things, we say okay, let's bring in today and how we can be able to you know end the year on a good note. So that's why we are having it tonight. I'll, I must confess that I'm the most happiest person today due to three things. Number one, this year uh, I had some career challenges that our speaker tonight had me pulled out by the grace of God. Number two, and compared to my projection for the year, uh, actually I didn't eat 100%, but I will say I give God the praise because I think I eat up to 85 or 90% of it. Then also uh, tonight events, it was my team, my volunteer team that really, really gingered us that tonight we must have tonight events. I had a lot on my table trying to run up for the year, but here we are tonight. I'm very sure everybody on the call will enjoy tonight's session, right? So don't, you know, don't feel somehow that we are not that much on the call as of now. I can assure you that many will still join us. Some will join on YouTube, some will jump, join on Facebook, join, some will join on Instagram, but let's see what you can take home as individual. And let's see what I can take home as individual. Good evening once again. My name is Ebenezer, the host of 45 Millimeter HR. Thank you for joining us once again. Uh, Mr. I mean, Madam Happiness, can we have the, um, the speaker's profile and let's proceed immediately. Thank you so much, Mr. Ebenezer. Thank you so much for the brief introduction. Uh, so I'll just get right into it. And again, thank you all for joining in tonight, even in a very short notice, just as Mr. Ebenezer has said. So, um, we have our guest speaker here tonight. Uh, his name is Mr. Oluyemi Adoshun. It's a pleasure to have you here again. Uh, so on his profile, Mr. Oluyemi Adoshun is a top performing, accomplished and skilled human resource executive and researcher with over 16 plus years of experience across high profile industries, including power, oil and gas, telecommunications, broadcasting, real estate, advertising, academia, consulting and, volu and volunteer work. Offers professional expertise and a diverse range of skills within training and development, organizational strategy development, business partnership, change management, employee relationship management, and administrative expert HR role. Currently it belongs to uh, some uh, professional bodies as a member of Chartered Institute of Personnel Management, MCIPM, also member of the Governing Council, CIPM. He's also uh, the, a senior professional, Human Resources International, that's SPHRI, and is also uh, a global practitioner, Human Resources, GPHR, as a PhD candidate, Economics Department, University of Lagos, which is currently ongoing. Uh, he also has MBA from the prestigious Obafemi Awolowo University, Ilefe. He also has MSc Economics, University of Lagos. He also has BSc in Economics, University of Illinois, Nigeria. So currently, he's the head of he's the head employee relations, Iteja Electric. And previously, before now, he has occupied diverse um, positions in different um, industries such as uh, the head human resources and administration, the head of human resources and administration at Career Plus Limited, people manager at Russell Smith Integrated Oil Services, uh, head human resources, technology distributions limited, the head, head shared services at Field Co Limited, also the head human resource at Emotion Advertising. He also has prior experience in consulting and HR experience at Global at Globacom, 
a major telecommunications firm, is also a member of Toastmasters International, and I've attained the highest award of Distinguished Toastmasters, DTM. He has published 20 papers in web table journals. Let's make welcome for our distinguished and prestigious uh, guest speaker for tonight, Mr. Oluyemi Adosho. Once again, you're welcome in our midst. You have the floor, sir. Thank you, good evening. Thank you for the elaborate introduction and warm welcome, happiness. I'm excited to be here. My profound gratitude and regards also to my brother and my professional colleague, and to the team of volunteers and everyone on this call. Thank you most sincerely for having any time I'm privileged to be to speak. I do not take it for granted because there are always many opportunities for other people to take it. Sir, we can be here, you sir. If the opportunity locates you, then you, you must grab it. Can you hear me? Um, Manage probably by 70%. Give me one or two minutes. Let me see if I can use another device okay, to sir. log in. Okay, sir. All right, while we wait for uh, Mr. Oluyemi, actually the, uh, the idea of this topic is trying to assess what has happened to us as professional during the course of the year, trying to see what we individually do it right, what we should have improved on, and also how to better prepare for 2022 intentionally. I know some of us plan to have some certification this year. I know some of us had the mind to probably change job or so. I know some of us even had the mind to, you know, even put figure that in the first quarter or second quarter of the year, um, um, I'm supposed to be eating probably, you know, a half of a million a salary or close to that range. Or you know what? I want to even change my, you know, my 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 work life entirely. I want to move into. I want to transition to another. I want to transition to another another career plot entirely. So the idea of this uh, this topic and this session tonight is for us to really look at what happened to us critically in our professional life in 2021. Then also take from take one or two lessons from that and to see how we can be part of the winners in 2020, 2022. So at the moment, I want us to type in your questions or your expectations. I want to type in some of the things you are expecting from the speakers to eat on. I think our speaker is currently ready now. Mr. Oluyemi, can you confirm that you are You are, you are with us now, sir. Yes. So it's not left for you to confirm if you can hear me better. I have to change yes, yes, from yes, sir. To, to a laptop. OK. So thank you so much. Um, we'll just move straight into it. 2021 you know, uh, has been mixed feelings for different people. Um, due to a number of factors, some the global economic uh, perspective, the national perspective, industrial challenges and realities, changing technology and dynamism of work. And the last but most important, due to our individual preparation, readiness, approach, attitude and disposition. I know people this year, for example, who got international jobs and have relocated abroad. I also know people who this year got international jobs and they are doing it remotely, virtually from Nigeria and today are earning dollars and are in this Nigeria, Lagos, Ibadan, Anugu, Abuja with us. I also know people who got promoted, got change jobs, 
And so no people lost their jobs, sadly so. The truth is that this kind of reality will likely repeat itself next year. But which part of the divide will hide be? Which part of the divide will you be? Let me also say quickly that we need to prepare ourselves for opportunities and also for unforeseen circumstances. I'll say that clearly. Anytime I have the opportunity to engage with people, either one-on-one -on -one or as a group, to discuss career, even if it is personal, I make sure that we discuss both your opportunities and then say, God forbid, God forbid, God forbid, what if you lose your job right now? And you are not planning taking your career seriously. If you cannot mentally think through if you lose your job on Monday and have an immediate fallback plan, I can give you one or two fallback plans of one or two people I know. I know someone that says, God forbid, if I lose my job on Monday, I will start doing Uber. He has only one car. And intentionally, he makes sure that the car he bought is a car he can use for Uber. That's his fallback plan. Now, he doesn't plan to go to Uber permanently, but at least he won't be completely depressed that, oh, there is nowhere to go to. There is nothing small to earn to give my family while he's, so to speak, trying to change his white collar job. Some other people, they may have a side also, a small business, or supporting their partner if they are married to ensure that their, the financial position of their partner is such that they won't enter into this potency. Now, are you on your current job? Are you fully aware? And when I say awareness, some people are in organization, they don't really know how the organization is making money. They don't really know how the organization is bleeding. You see, when you see situations where organization downsize, if you are fully aware, you will have seen the handwriting on the wall a long time ago. You will have been able to appreciate if the effort of the organization to turn around the fortunes of the organization will yield a positive dividend or not. Now, as an individual, you need to have what goes. My brother mentioned there that, oh, even if you didn't achieve 100%, Maybe 70%, maybe 80%, maybe 90%. There is something for him to benchmark. My first challenge to anybody listening to this call today, either via the Zoom platform, Facebook Live, or YouTube, whatever you have set as your goal, if you have set your goal, at least that goal, stretch it between 50 to 100%. I'll come back to you again. So let's assume you have set this is just an example. Let's say your salary today is 50,000 Naira. And you have said, oh, God helping me. My salary will increase to 100,000 Naira next year. Stretch it to between 150 or 200. That's the first thing. Some people may say, oh, Remy, are you crazy? I'm on 50. I need double 100. I say quadruple it. You see, we never know our potentials until we have audacious goals. Those goals must be outrageous to people around you and to you. After I have crossed that mental barrier to say I am making this quantum leap in my career, then you now go to the next question. What are the, so to speak, crazy strategies you must put in place? What must you change, for example, in your routine? So between your current reality and your desired career realities, what kind of networks must you build? What kind of relationship? I give an example. Last year, I had a target that my network on NICD, that I should double it. What did I do? I use certain keywords to look for people in certain industries and within my community. And I started sending LinkedIn invites to them. I probably sent maybe LinkedIn invites to over 1,000 over a space of like two months. Guess what? Maybe like 300 of them accepted my invites. But 
my network on LinkedIn increased by over 400 people by that my action. Of course, some other people were neutrally reaching out to me who were also worthy of me accepting networking. If you are a member of a professional association, if you are a member of a WhatsApp group that has professional leanings, are you active? You can be there. You never contribute. You don't ask questions. You don't share relevant information. You are just passive. Yes, there are things you will gain by being passive, but try and get a little more active everywhere you are. If you're a church member, for example, and you're just a member and not a worker, transit and become a worker. You will suddenly realize that workers in churches have access to more opportunities than just members. I don't understand the mystery behind it, but anybody who is active anywhere, even if it is on the WhatsApp group, you will have more benefits than somebody who is passive. Let's get back to your current job, your current workplace. I would say you also need to be more active. What do I mean? I know today, maybe you follow your job description, you follow instruction of your line manager, you carry assignments. You need to do a little apropo, a little. In other words, maybe another colleague in another unit is complaining that, oh, this work is stealing me. If it is something you have some knowledge about, say, let me help you. You see, the competencies you have today, they are very good. There's no doubt about it. But you need to acquire more competencies, both horizontally and what and vertically. Another odd question you may need to ask yourself, God forbid, again, I reiterate, God forbid, if in the organization you are working today, if you are working, they want to downsize by 50%. Do a mental analysis. Which part of the 50% do you be? The 50% that we go up or the 50% that we stay? If it is the people percent that we stay, congratulations, but don't relax. What if they change it to 25% that we stay? So that you don't feel comfortable because it's possible you may be working with a group of people that are laid back. They are not forceful, they are not stretching, they are not trying to get more competencies, more skills, more capabilities, they are not reading books in their subject area, they are not doing certifications, they are not doing trainings, both free and paid, just to get ahead. You see, the truth is, I believe in law, but sincerely, I believe you can invent your own law. I'll say that again. Is there law? Absolutely. But you can actually invent your own law. So there are certain actions you have to what, take. You have to be what intentional. You cannot afford, from a career perspective, to approach the year 2022 like a victim. Who is a victim? A victim is someone that something always happened to. They didn't do anything. No. Victims don't do anything. Something just happened to them. Oh, I was just walking on the road and that man came and ran into the water and splashed the water on me. It is not my fault. They will not see that they were at the wrong place at the wrong time. For example, if I'm walking on the road on a rainy, wet day, I will not only will I be looking where I'm going, I'll also be looking at the road. If I see that I'm getting to a muddy part of the road, Either I will wait for cars to pass, and then before the next car comes, I will walk very fast so that whether the car driver is kind, benevolent, or malicious or unconscious, he will not be able to splash his car in the water on me. I am not a victim. In your career space, you cannot bring the victim mentality into the workplace. Also, you cannot come to the workplace from the perspective of pity, sentiment in 2022. Look, if people like you, they will help you. But in addition to people liking you, it is important that people find you very helpful. When you are very helpful, it's another level. So if they now, if they find you helpful and then they like you. 
it will not even, if they are supposed to give you 50% pay rise, they can turn it to 75%. But if they like you, but you are not helpful, it's zero times zero. Just because they like you. For example, I like Ebenezer, Ebenezer likes me. But if Ebenezer doesn't think I can add one or two value today, if he invites me to be to come and listen, because he likes me and he knows that whoever is speaking tonight, I will get one or two things. He will not say I should come and speak. So you need to leave that era, that that uh, circumference, that very very of uh, they like me, they don't like me. You must push to the level that whether they like me or not, because I'm very helpful, they will send for me. When they, there is work to be done, they will call me. It will now transit to when there is reward to be shared, then it will get to get to you. So how can you enhance your capability to be helpful next year? A couple of things you can do, which we have already spoken about today, which we have been speaking about in the different episodes of my HR since we started this year. One, you must what? Continue to own your skills, improve your skills. You see, you can't be stagnant in competency. It's just like your age. There is no day you are the same age. Because we use age in years, you know, you just say, oh, I'm, I'm 34, sir. When I ask you tomorrow again, you will still tell me I'm 34. But if you look at it critically, maybe you are 34 years, 28 days. By the next day, you are 34 years, 29 days. Similarly, in your skills, you must not be on the same level. The way you can use Excel two months ago, you see the same way you can use Excel two months after. Your PowerPoint capability two months ago, you see the same two months later. The way you format a Word document two months ago, is still the same way you format a Word document. The way you write a memo two months ago, you see the way you write the memo two months later. No, sir. You will notice that I've intentionally mentioned very simple tools. So much more importantly, there are some things that maybe last year or this outgoing year sounded a little strange, far reaching to us. Maybe you hear terms like artificial intelligence, blockchain technology, uh, robotics, next year, those terms must not be what far-fetching to you. You must quickly familiarize okay, what is robotics, what is artificial intelligence, how does these things. So for example, type that word artificial intelligence and your profession, your job. Is there a correlation? Are there people today using artificial intelligence for sales, if you are a salesperson? If you're an HR, are there artificial intelligence today in HR? What is artificial intelligence doing, for example, in HR? What part can artificial intelligence not do? So that if tomorrow there is accelerated growth in these new technologies, and it will most likely wipe out some jobs. But what I've realized is that if new jobs, opportunities will be created, the question is, will you be aligned to take over those jobs? So they may sack 10 people, but they will hire 15 people. Or they may sack 10 people and hire five people. Will you be part of those five that will work transition? So you need to really pay attention to these things. Now, some subtle things you may also need to pay attention to. This may I'm saying this maybe because of just one person, but one person is what it is. Ebenezer can testify that somebody left 99 ships for one. So one person is very important. You may also look at it, the way you dress. And I'm not talking about the amount you spend on the dressing. I live at Yaba. If you go to opposite Yaba left, so that would be what Yaba writes. There are places that for reasonable amount of money, eh, we call it Okrika, bend down boutique. 
if you go at the right time, you choose the thing, you wash it, they will think you walk on broad street. I just came that low for people who may want to think they don't have any money at all. It's just a sense. You know, some, some people will, will dress, they will think their profession is, a, is mag magic. They are magicians, red or yellow, you know. However, if, for example, you are in the entertainment industry, that may be the right dressing. So I'm not saying one type of dressing, but I'm saying the way you dress, look at the most successful people in your field. How do they dress? How can you what align? Please, everybody on this call, invest a little more in your grooming next year. Dress so well that people by April people will be saying, man, only Amy, you are looking. So let every day look like you are going for, for interview. Invest. How do you starch it? How do you iron it? How do you try clean? It matters. If you are like me, don't like polishing your shoe. Begin to polish your shoe every two days. Some people, when they look at a man, they look at his shoe. If his shoe is good, then they look at his belt. So please, and that small thing, punctuality. Punctuality to work, to meetings. And it doesn't matter whether it is a physical meeting or a virtual meeting. Because some people, you know before, when everything was strictly physical, at least in this part of the world, they had an excuse. The excuse would be, ah, if you see the traffic on the way, guess what? That we are now doing some meetings or thought program or other meetings online. People are still coming late. Is there traffic on the internet again? Is principally what attitudinal. Let people know that what you are punctual. Physical, virtual. Now, people don't know, but subconsciously, people attach reliability and punctuality together. Subconsciously, once you are, cannot be punctual, people subconsciously think you cannot be reliable. It may not be so, but perception sometimes can be bigger than what reality. And in 2022, for the sake of your career, you must manage the perceptions about you and around you, professionally and personally. People around you must think you know more than you know. People around you must think you are better than you are. So, you know, I've told you that you must deepen your confidence, but I'm not saying your perception must be larger than life. When you speak like people say, wow, this guy must have been to a Ivy League university. The way this guy dress, ah, let's say you go for an interview. When they see your CV, let them say, will we even be able to afford this guy? Improve on your words, on your branding. So I was talking about punctuality. Still closely related to it. When you are giving assignments, deadlines, especially when you also agree to it. You tell somebody, I will do it somebody a favor. A favor. They are not paying you. They are just assisting a friend or a colleague with an assignment, once you commit, please get the job done and get it out. If for one reason or the other, things may not work out the way you anticipated, or some other assignment came in, maybe paid assignment or your official assignment, be quick to reach out to that person to either negotiate an extension of timing or the assignment of the task. Don't let it be when it is time to deliver, a blizzard will now call you and now begin to say, and, and you know, actually, because the day a paid gig will come in, that's your not being reliable will be the stumbling block between whether you will be what recommended or nominated in the first place. So, tiny matters, we are not going to take them for granted in 2022 because our light in our career must what must shine. And it must shine extremely bright, extremely bright. So we must make sure that the way we, we communicate, both in words 
at meetings and um, we the information we share on our social media handles let me give you one or two tiny insights please try as much as possible if you are invited for a meeting at work or for example even if it is one hour notice you know as long as you know the purpose of the meeting the subject matter please even if it is 10 or 15 minutes go and research let's assume this hypothetical they say we want to discuss how to increase our sales in 2022. Now, which industry are you in? What do you sell? Just go to Google. Just type it in. How to increase sales in real estate in a recession. If you spend 30 minutes or 15 minutes, there will be 10, 15, 20 ideas that will jump at you. I agree, not all, everything will be useful. But the three or five that will be useful, if you not, cannot tweak it a little and apply your local context and your logic of your organization to it, by the time they say, who has anything to say? Please be fast to raise up your hand. Do you know why? If you are 10 in the meeting or eight and you let like five people talk before you, you will enter the realm of like Ebenezer said, like Oluyemi said. So if you quickly raise up your hand, you quickly share your three, four ideas. They may take two or three of them. You have contributed. The reason why you'll be quick to talk is that you didn't start thinking about the issue in the meeting. You started thinking about it and researching when you got the meeting invite. So you must use this, permit me to say it, cheat code. It's not cheat because anybody has access to it. Anybody can do it. It's just diligence. Going the word extra mile. You see, the axe one man back in the days was very rich before he died. His name is Paul Getty. He was the owner, if I'm not mistaken, of, of Standard Oil back then in America. They said, what is the secret to success? How do you succeed in life? Paul Getty said three things. The first one, he said, wake up early. Wake up early means, so for example, in my organization today, 98% of my colleagues always meet me at my office every day. I wake up early. I get there early. By the time they are sitting down, they've gotten a lot of emails from me, either fresh assignments or responses. So it's real that you will resume at your own desk. Let's say you sent me a mail even later or yesterday. You will have the opportunity to say, sir, you are here to approve. Sir, you are here to provide me feedback. Sir, you are here to give me an instruction on this pending thing. I get there early. Is that same concept of getting there early that will make you, when you saw the meeting invite, you are going to do research on the subject matter. By the time you enter the meeting, you are one hour ahead of the meeting. You've gotten there early. Not, so it's not just a physical getting early. It's a mental getting early. This program we're having today is helping us to get early into our 2022. Most churches, organizations since November, they've been having maybe prayer session, um, word sessions for next year. Even though this year is not over. What are they trying to do? They are trying to get their members to arrive early. Forget it, say, first secret to success in career and in life, wake up early. The second thing, the second thing he said, he said, stay up late. Now, this looks difficult because some people will wake up early and close on time. Some people will come on time, not early, on time, and then stay late. Paul Getty said, wake up early, but to stay late. In other words, somebody rightly said that in the extra mile, there is no traffic there. There is traffic on the normal mile, but there is no traffic in the extra mile. When you stay late, when others... Now, this staying late may not necessarily mean... So I want you to understand me and not miss, I appreciate what I'm saying. Does not necessarily mean 
you are physically staying at the workplace. You might have gotten up, but you are still on the job. You are still researching. You are still analyzing. You are reviewing your, your work. You are planning for tomorrow. So when you stay late, you will get insights. Because your own mind, your own brain is still processing for results. You will get more what insight. The third thing for getting said. Remember the first one, wake up early. The second thing, stay, wait, stay late. The third one, very important. He said you should strike oil. Of course, he was the owner of Standard Oil. If you wake up early and you stay late and you are into oil drilling business and you don't strike oil, my question for you, what is the oil in your career? What is the oil in your organization? You must strike it. You must what? Assess it. You must what? Annex it. 2022 is going to be a beautiful year. Not because it's going to be easier than 2021. I can, you know, you know, we have prophets. They will tell you that uh, in 2022, one or two traditional rulers will die. Which year did a traditional ruler not die? You will hear a prominent politician will, will give up the ghost. You will hear somebody will be disappointed. You will be aiming for your office. Have you seen any year one politician or the other was not disappointed? Let me also give you one point prophecy in quotes, in quotes now. Dollar will go up next year, more than this year. So for example, you have been trying to do professional examination. That is for the, if you don't do it this year, you will spend more money next year. I'll put it to you again. If you don't, if it's $200 this year, and it's still $200 next year, because you are paying in Naira, you will need to work extra one or two, three, four months to take out the money. So please, you need to what? Strike oil. You see, in any career you are, there is the center, there is the periphery. Where is that oil in your profession? Stay on it. And how do you identify these things? You need to what? Look at data. So at this level, because this is the last program for this year, and this meeting is intimate, don't just focus on your passion. We have passed that level. You know, this is an intimate meeting. We have passed that level of focusing on your passion. You need to focus on what will provide solution to people in your industry, to people in your space, and turn it to your passion. That is striking oil. That is what striking oil. See, I'm positive that because of our predisposition to knowledge, to robbing minds consistently like this, normally people should be resting. You've had a hard day at work, but you're here again, robbing minds. Our iron is sharpening each other. So let's do that. The, the last thing I would like to say is that the, the relationships in your life right now and the new ones that we emerge, you need to treat everybody well. And when I say this, I say with humility. It doesn't matter if somebody is a gate man or a general manager. Treat everybody as a GM. I'll say it again. Treat everybody as a GM. It doesn't matter if they're a gate man or a general manager. You never know where that insight will come from. You never know where that recommendation will come from. I remember very early in my career, I was just an officer. Yet, an executive director always called me and he would say, see this person's request, see this person's request, what should I do? 99 of 100 times, the executive director did what the officer told him to do. Meanwhile, many people will pass me. They will greet them, they won't answer you. If you don't personally fear God, won't that impair your decision, your recommendation to the ED? So the same way you are nice to the executive director, the reception is please nice. Whether people are your siblings, please don't carry malice into 2020. People will have genuine, and it has happened to me two, three, four times, even in, in business. People, some of my customers who have been very rude, insolent, 
six months later will give me a big contract. In my mind, if I had been so bitter and bitter because of the way the person was rude, I would have missed the contract they would have given me six months. Please, the way providence works, providence chooses who to bless you with. And it's not necessarily people you like. So, as much as within your capacity, you must be at peace. It's all me. I'd like to stop here and then respond directly to questions from the host and from the panel and from the members of the participating team. Any question, please, I'll be like to respond. Good evening and thank you for your time. Wow, 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 wow. Well, I think it's over to you because I have this Mr. Mr. DM is on this loaded. Remember the last time? He was on the call with us talking about inside from job advertisement. It was, in fact, if you're on this call and like, you never listen to that, please go on YouTube, go and listen to that, 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 I mean, that seminar webinar. It was very, very, very full. I must confess to you that he's currently out of the state for an official assignment. And yet, he, 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 he likes our platform and is a man who likes to give back to the people. Thank you so much, Mr. Deyemi and Ms. Oluyemi Adosho. Really appreciate you for your time. Um, we, we, we know that 2022 is going to be a smiling year for each and every one of us. So happiness is over to you for the question and answer session. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Oluyemi. Thank you so, so much. All of your uh, lectures are always so impactful. You hit the nail on every side. You know, even today, I remember uh, your last session, just like uh, Mr. Beniza has said, on your having to read job description and all, I've not really recovered from it because I'm always paying attention to job description. I'm not just paying attention to it. I've always, it has led me to having to build up myself to be valuable to other industries, you know. Thank you so much for your um, lecture today, starting from your setting our trade uh, Mr. Goals. Yami, please, happiness, just... Happiness, happiness, just a second, sir. Mr. Lee, I mean, okay. at least I want to tell you something secret about happiness. I don't want any other person to hear on the call. So if you're on this call, <laughs> just judge it like this. She got an international job this year. After this week, she got an international job this year. Wow. You, Congratulations, <laughs> happiness. I'll keep thank it a secret. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, sir. Okay, so um, if you're here on, on, on this call and you have questions, you can just raise up your hand or you could just type it on the chat box. While the questions are coming in, I have my own question to ask. Thank you so much again, Mr. Liam. So my question is, first, today by mentioning that it's, I mean, it's important to set out outrageous goals. And after setting out our goals, we need to also come up with strategies to meet up these goals. Now, my question is this, as a person setting out all of these um, outrageous goals, how do you put yourself in check? To achieve these goals, you know, sometimes we could we could just be lazy and we tell ourselves, "See, I've tried. You know, let me just relax." Or, in fact, what I did, the goal I set is too much in the first place. So let me not just kill myself. So, what are the things that can keep one going, and how do you put yourself in check such that I mean, how do you discipline yourself to achieve all of these goals such that you don't fall by the wayside or you don't just put them aside? So that would be my question. Okay. Thank you so much, Happiness. The first thing I would like to say in response to this is that you also need to have an outrageous problem. Let me give you an example. So if you think about all the poor people in South Sudan, and you think of if you made more money, how you can help them, or if you are from my village, just think about all the poor people in the hospitals who can afford to pay. You see, you must have pictures of problems you want to solve that is bigger than your own family needs. If all you care about is just you and your two children, you can go back to complacency. But when you have the mindset that you want to solve generational problems, you want to solve problems across races, across the rights, you can't go back to complacency mode. You can't go back. So just look for a picture of a global body. 
and then it will reset your mind. Thank you. Hmm. Thank you so much, sir. I have put that in my bag. Well noted. Okay, so um, I think we have questions here already. Um, it's saying apart from planning and preparation, what are the other attributes for starting writing 2022? Apart the from planning and preparation, we, okay. The third one that we had for this person is ruthless execution, relentless execution. Okay, so you must have step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. And you also say if step one doesn't work, you don't enter a pity party mode. What is alternative to step one? Even step two, what's the alternative to step two? So you must be ruthless. And you must also have redundancy. What do I mean by redundancy? If I do one, two, three, and it fail, and it may fail, don't quit. You just keep attempting to what? Strike hard. So it's ruthless execution. For example, if you are looking for a job, the question I will ask is, how many applications do you send a day? Do you send up to 100 applications in a day? You know, some of us, we say we did jump so many times, we became, jump wanted to give us discounts. Let all the job sites, let them know that who is only a mere with the number of applications. A friend told me, he, he got a scholarship for his BSc, got a scholarship for his MSc, he got a scholarship for his PhD. And I looked at him, we were roommates for, for 30 days in South Africa. I said, Peter, will it be in order if I say you must have been very lucky and brilliant as an academic? He looked at me, said, only let me, all of my life, I must have submitted over 1,222 applications for scholarship. I looked at him, I said, Peter, permit me to withdraw the word lucky. The people you know looking for scholarship, are they sent up to 500? So you must be what? Relentless. Thank you. I can't hear you, ma'am. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Liemi. Thank you so much for your response on that. I'm sure that is uh, well noted. Um, try to be ruthless also. And um, I don't know if you have other questions to ask before we round this up. Okay, please, there's a question here from Victor. It's saying, please help ask how, how one can manage work-life balance when striving for excellence at work. Thank you so much, Victor. In fact, I would love to hear the answer to that. Especially when you said, get up early, stay up late, and all of that. How do you strike a balance? Okay. So, you see, for me, after a while, that work and life becomes one. Work is life, and life is work. So, when you're at work, you're at home. When you're at home, you're at work. After a while, if you... So, for example, I play volleyball for leisure. You won't believe it. Sometimes, after maybe my team loses a game or I'm substituted, in the volleyball, like 12 ideas will have dropped and I'm playing volleyball. Isn't that work life balance? I'm playing volleyball and ideas to solve a problem is dropping in my mind. But let me also shock you sometimes I'm working, I'm at work, and volleyball will flash in my mind. I'll just see myself playing volleyball mentally that, oh, when I'm serving, the next time I'll do this. That's work life balance because it's intertwined. Of course, I know what the person is trying to say. You, how do you balance your, your leisure, your work? Now, some of these things is how you have to position yourself. So, for example, for those of us who stay on this call, who live in Lagos, 
your work-life balance is first and foremost a function of where you are living in Lagos. So, for example, all of my life in Lagos, I've stayed in Bariga, Shomolu, Yaba. It has enhanced my work-life balance because those areas are generally accessible to places like VI, Ikeja, Apapa, Bagada. But if you are living at uh, my friend's house at Agungi and uh, you are working at Ikeja, you have already compromised your work-life balance at the initial. You understand? So work-life balance at Saturday. So let me say this, and this is just on a lighter note. Don't copy me. I have one child by, by the grace of God. And don't add it to your, your prayer list. I'm not looking for more. It helps me to have work-life balance. If you have five, like one of my colleagues, before you do homework for five children, your life will have balance now. So some of the actions you will take, like where you live, like the, the kind of person you marry, so if you have not married, if you want your work and life to balance, marry right. Otherwise, it will not balance for the next 82 years. So get some fundamental rights, you know, alignments. Make sure that as much as possible, you are, you are doing what you are passionate about or flip it. You, have, you become passionate about what you are doing so that work doesn't become a chore and work doesn't become life, okay? So you must look for things to entertain yourself, or maybe watch one movie in a week, one football match in a week, or you watch highlights, 15 minutes, super sport beats every day, whatever. Look for things to do. Your life will be balanced. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Uriemi. I'm sure Victor, I'm sure that um, response can help you going forward. Okay, so another question here from Lydia. What advice will you give some of us who is just starting this HR journey and what position will you advise us to start from, sir? Okay, you start from the opportunity at hand, which can be anything. It can even be a front desk role. It can be intern, HR intern. You may even volunteer without getting paid. Or it can be you are preparing for your CIPM or a foreign professional exams, or you are reading everything on HR that you can find online. You take one or two HR textbooks, for example, Armstrong is 432 pages, and you read it from cover to cover as if your, your life depends on it. So start with whatever, because like they say, I will say it in English, but it's a Yoruba sentence. So don't say my English is not correct. You know, one way does not enter a market. So if you understand Yoruba, you will understand what I just said. One way does not enter a market. So I know you guys are too. Shopping malls have multiple entrance. So let me speak your language. There's no shopping mall that will have only one entrance. HR and any other career too is like a market. There are multiple ways. Which way is close to your arrival point? Enter from there. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Um, I'm sure, um, your Lydia. I hope your question is your question is answered. Okay, so we have another question here, and uh, that will be our last question for tonight. And um, Hannah is asking, how should one handle the transition from admin to human resources management? And she said, each time I try this, I am told my experience in admin is more than HR, despite my certificates and masters in international human resources management. Hence, I will not be given the opportunity. You know, so how can she really transition from admin to human resources? Okay, the first thing you need to do is to transition mentally. What do I mean that you transition mentally? Admin is HR. If you can't get that admin is HR, then you can transition mentally. Now, take this particular model, David Orich's HR model. There are four cardinal points in HR. One, employee champion. Two, change agent. Okay. Three, business partnering. Four, 
administrative experts. You have just focused in one of the four cardinal points, but it's an integral part of that cardinal point. And if you take one or two mental steps backward, all your admin career, you, there are HR, four HR things that you have been doing. Identify them and let them show vividly in your CV. When you go for your next interview, don't speak like an admin person. Speak like an HR person. Let them see that all of your life, that even if your nomenclature, the nomenclature of your job title is admin officer, admin manager, whatever it is, let them know that what you are doing in reality has been what human resource management. You just have extra admin capabilities to it. So you are well positioned. Don't see yourself as disadvantaged. You are not. You are not at all. If I were you, I would even be looking for HR and ad, there are even vacancies that are HR and admin officer or HR admin manager or group head, HR admin. I still dropped one in one of our groups today. So you are well primed for that next level. Don't worry, 2022 will be your year. I'll show you. Thank you so much, Mr. Oliam. You just, you know, hit the nail on the head. I remember before I became, you know, an HR um, professional, I started off as an admin, you know, and I got close to the HR, you know, man manager in my place of work, and I started learning gradually and all of that. Before you know it, I was fully transitioned because I paid uh, so much attention to all of, you know, the functions of uh, HR through my HR manager. So I think that can help also. Uh, I think that'll be all for tonight. Uh, Mr. Ebenezer, I don't know if you have any closing remark. You need to okay. Now okay. we can. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you, sir. So let me quickly just add to what the boss said and happiness. So, and also the other thing is that just be confident, your time will come. And also have a friend like a mentor that even if you get the job, if you are in the peace, you can call somebody, uh, please, so this HR stuff, how do, I, how do I do about it? I have friends who call me on daily basis and I don't take them for granted because I know that every advi I mean, advice I give them, you know, will help them to stay a little more on their current job. The same thing, so when you are applying for a job, HR job, Go with all confidence. Tell yourself you can do just like Mr. Oluyemi said say that you can do this, that it's your own feed. Then surround yourself with people and associates and you know, a kind of network that can boost your knowledge. Then study more about HR now. And the sky will be your starting point. So Mr. Oluyemi, once again, I want to appreciate you for always giving us authority. Every time we call on you, you have never actually, you know, uh, 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 you have never actually uh, disappointed us personally. Like I, like that thing I said I do for people, Mr. Lee, you do that for me every time. Anytime I need something, if I release my message, now, he will reply that now or later. So thank you so much for, you know, raising me to you everywhere. And we are glad that we are following somebody who is knowledgeable, who is fast, and who has something we can all learn about. I don't know. On that note, Mr. Oliyemi, I want you to give us your passing word, please. Your passing word. All right. Um, thank you so much again, Ebenezer, for inviting me. And thank you to the over 22 plus people on this Zoom and other people on the other platform and others who will later come and watch the recording. I'd like to say that, please, do write yourself off write yourself in. Don't write yourself off. Write yourself in. I'd like you to know that you are very, very valuable. You are an asset. Don't approach 2022 with a beggarly spirit. Don't come with the perspective that, please, help me. No. Approach 2022 with, I want to help you. I want to help my organization. I want to help my line manager. I want to help my subordinates. 
you are the one bringing help and come from the position of strength you are a savior in quote you are you are like salt you are you are you are a seasoning okay don't come like hey, i don't have work come and help me no you are not a beggar you are a skillful resource that should be highly sought after so please even if you are working for free carry your shoulder high put your head high look up please don't look down in 2022 god will open bigger doors and beyond the scope of our labor god will bless us thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your weekend All right, sir. Thank you so much. Okay, sorry. Please, thank you so much, Mr. Oluyemi. Can we please and unmute our mic and say a word of appreciation and thank you to Mr. Oluyemi before he takes the vow. Please, let's unmute thank ourselves you. and just say a word of Thank you, Mr. Thank you, sir. Much appreciated, sir. Thank you so much. I've been following you. I'm happy to meet with you today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lydia. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you Ms. Oluyemi. Thank you, the Thank organizing you, team. Grateful. Very impressive.